All right, peace and love to the saints who are watching this video. I want to start off by giving all praise to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, the Anointed Savior. Um, and let's get straight into this. So you see the title of this video. I don't want to take up too much time getting to this. This is part two. Um, I advise you to go watch part one of how the Messiah has really come back. In part one, I broke down how he's coming back through his saints, right? But not only that, I wanted to expound on that here in part two. So here, as you can see, we're in 1 Thessalonians, right? Chapter three. And I'm going to go to verse 13. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So check that out. So at the end, he's going to establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even the Father, at the coming of our Lord. Right? I just reread it. So he's coming back with all his saints. Check that out. He's coming back. Who are the saints, right? I could go deeper into that. But let me get this in Jude really quick. Right. Check this out. Likewise, ye filthy dreamers. All right, I'm gonna go to verse 14. In Enoch, here we go right here. In Enoch also, seven from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, "Behold, the Lord cometh." with ten thousands of his saints you can see it right here to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurers complainers Walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having man's persons in admiration because of advantage. So check that out. He's coming back. Even Enoch prophesied this. He said he's coming back with ten thousands. We don't know. Look. It just say 10,000. We don't know how many that is. It say 10,000 of his saints. Just like we just read at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. He's coming back with his saints. Just giving a um, quick run through for the stuff. These are things that you probably already knew. But you know, before I go too far into it. I just wanted to, um, you know, like I said, kind of do a quick run, run through and expound on the first breakdown, right? So, um, let's see. So now we're in Revelation, right? And uh, if you've seen the first breakdown, it said it. Uh, I already brought this out but here's verse 7 behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen so he's coming back with ten thousands of his saints as we just read in Jude um, and also first Thessalonians 3 and now his is saying Behold, he coming with clouds. So his saints are referred to as clouds. How do we know this? Because we just read those uh those chapters. But also check this out. Hebrews chapter 12. And I don't have any of this written down anything. I'm just, just moving through the spirit. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number one. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with 
so great a cloud of witnesses. Check this out. A cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run us let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Check that out. So he said that he's, uh, we are compassed about with the cloud of witnesses. Which are who? The saints. The angels. Let's go to Hebrews 1. Watch this. Here we go. For some reason, my um computer froze for a second this is just a quick precept I wanted to pull look at this and of the angels he says who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire I already brought this out before too and uh Verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits? So we're hovered about with the cloud of witnesses, meaning what? The angels, which are ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Check that out. So the clouds are the angels, the saints, right? Um, and they're a cloud of witnesses sent forth to minister to those you know who shall be heirs of the kingdom so who are the heirs of the kingdom check this out and their son And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you are Christ, if you are in Christ, then you are heir, right, according to the seed. So that's who the saints are. Um, but let's get back to how the Messiah is really coming back. So let's go to Second Peter. No, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter five, right? First Thessalonians chapter five. I'm gonna go to verse one. But of the time and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall uh, so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So the day of the Lord, which is when Christ is coming, is coming like a thief in the night. But check this out. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Why does he say that? Because darkness is night, right? So, but you, brother, are not in the night. I'm going to just interchange that word. But ye, brother, are not in the night or wickedness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light because day and light are interchangeable, right? For righteousness. So ye are all children of righteousness and the children of the day or light. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep 
as do others, but let us watch and be sober. What does he mean? For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Meaning you're in wickedness. You're sleeping. You're in a dark and you're in wickedness. But let us who are of the day concerning righteousness be sober. Meaning you're not drunk off of wickedness. You're not letting sin rule over you. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Check that out. So he's coming back as a thief in the night for those who are not watching or walking in the spirit, walking in righteousness. First Thessalonians four. But let's get into this, how he's coming back. Check this out. I'm going to start at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning to them which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. Now, this is another context of sleep. In one context, we see that he's saying uh, the ones that sleep and drunk in the darkness. In this context, he's not talking about those who's drunk and sleep in the darkness. He's talking about people that has died already upon the earth. How do I know this? Check this out. Concerning Lazarus. I'm going to start at verse 1. Now a certain man that was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Right? I just wanted to give you the context. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 4. When Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for uh but for the glory of god that the son of god might be glorified thereby right so he just told everybody that lazarus sickness was not unto death right now watch this verse i'm gonna skip down Verse 11, these things said he, and after that he says unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. What do you mean his friend Lazarus sleepeth? But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And that's how I know in 1 Thessalonians 4 that he's talking about the people that have died on earth. But just fell asleep into into him, into the spirit, to the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Then said his disciple, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death. Check that out. And then he said, watch this verse 14. Then Jesus uh, said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now, that's how I know. In 1 Thessalonians 4, that is not talking about uh, the darkness and the wicked ones, but it's talking about the ones that sleep, uh, that died upon earth, having the Holy Spirit, right? Because watch what he said now. Well, I'm going to start back at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Remember, he's coming back with his saints. So the people that has already died upon earth, they're asleep in Jesus. So they're asleep in the Holy Spirit. 
if you don't believe that Jesus is the Holy Spirit, read 1 Corinthians 12. Matter of fact, since I'm already in the Spirit, I said I wasn't going to make this too long, but the Spirit going to make it however long it's going to be. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, right? The scripture says, prove all things. Now I know what that scripture means, but, you know, it says prove all things. Now, let's see. I'm going to start at verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called the Jesus a curse. Now, the context is the Spirit of God. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Right, and then it's going to expound on all the different members or different gifts or different words of the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So the Holy Spirit is one spirit, but it has different components and different elements of it, different gifts, different members of the body. There are uh, differences of administration, but the same Lord. Only one spirit, one Holy Spirit, right? There are diversity of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. It's the same God that worketh all in all. Um, but I'm uh, now I'm going to give some examples. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom, to the other the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Watch this. I'm going to skip down to verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So that one spirit is Christ. So the ones that sleep are the saints. They fell asleep. Um, when they died on in from their earthly body, they fell asleep into the Holy Spirit, meaning they went to uh, they went to Christ into the Holy Spirit, right? So he's coming back with his angels and the people that already the the elect that died already. Um, but on a spiritual level, they're sleep. In Christ and the Holy Spirit on a fleshly level they're dead if that makes sense right so back to it I hope I'll make this plain if you have any questions let me know in the comment section verse 15 because remember just said God will bring them with him he's coming back with his saints ten thousands of his saints uh, verse 15 for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised, uh, Christ shall rise first. What do they mean? In the dead in Christ. Check that out. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, what does he mean by for the Lord himself shall defend? descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God see these two are tied in together what's the voice of the archangel well before we get there let's go to Matthew 24 and get some red letters and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, 
and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet like we just read now remember his angels it said archangels were in one context and now it says he should send his angels in this context so this archangel is a host of angels right and they shall gather together his select from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other now the reason why i wanted to point this out right because they're saying the same thing at the sound of a trumpet they shall gather up his elect right and then right here we see uh we which are alive which means right you didn't die And remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You must remember what were the clouds? The angels. And to meet the Lord in the air. What do they mean by that? Meet the Lord in the air. Now, if you if you watched part one, I kind of expounded on that. But we're going to get it anyway. Let's go to Ephesians 2. This is Ephesians 2. I'm going to go to verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So wait a minute now. The Holy Spirit is Christ, is Jesus Christ. Or as my brothers would say, Yahweh Shah. Or as my other brothers would say, Yahusha. Or Yesha. Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, Yesha. Hamashiach uh, Husha. I'm gonna say heavenly, but let's stick to this heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the heavenly places are in Christ. And what was in Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 12? The gifts, the members of the Holy Spirit. Faith, love, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. So he raised us up together and made us sit, which are the angels, right? Faith, knowledge, wisdom. These are the members of the body. These are the saints. And these are the heavenly places in Christ. I hope you're keeping up with me. If you don't believe me, let's get to it. Now, this is 1 Corinthians 15. This is also talking about the end time. What's going to happen? Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. And it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. So your natural body is corrupt. It's uh, dishonorable. Which, this, which is to say your fleshly body. Right? Your earthly body. Let's keep going. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Which means he was made life. He was he was made. Take that out. The last Adam is a spirit, first of all. But he's a spirit of life. How be it? That which was not first, which is spiritual. But that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Check that out. So the Lord from heaven is a spirit of life. Because quickening means to make alive. And check that out. Spiritual. Spiritual body. So these heavenly places are Christ. Um, our spiritual is spiritual the Lord from heaven is spiritual it's the Holy Spirit the second man is the Holy Spirit the first man is the earthy the first Adam which is your flesh check it out 
if we skip if we go back up we can see the whole context right verse 38 but god give it to the body as it pleased him and to every seed his own body all flesh is not the same flesh for there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts check that out so your fleshly body which is blood and your skin and water right all the all your elements of this earthly body is atom it's the first atom and then the, the invisible man that you can't see is the lord from heaven if you have the spirit of christ if you have one of his gifts as it is earthy so also so are they also that are earthy and as is the uh, the heavenly so are they, such are they that are heavenly as we have borne the image of the earthy so shall we also bear the image of the heavenly check that out we don't have the image of the heavenly yet outwardly it hasn't been um we can't see our spiritual body yet but check this out now this i say brethren that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither does corruption inherit in corruption behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep just like he just said in first thessalonians but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump check that out now the messiah just prophesied right here about the great sound of a trumpet also paul said at the trump at the trump of god the voice of the archangel which is a host of angels which if we read revelation and other contexts michael and his angels Michael is the archangel, right? Check this out. But the prince of the kingdom. Let me get to the point. Daniel 10 and 21. I want to focus here. But I will show thee that which is noted in the script in the scripture of truth. This is the scripture of truth. What's the scripture? The word. This is in the word of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. So these are the archangels, right? Michael and his angels. But anyways, uh, I don't want to go too far off. We're talking about the last trump. What's going to happen? For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought um sorry then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory check that out so it's going to be a spiritual body all the people that are asleep in christ or even alive that's working in the holy spirit actively when christ comes back are going to be changed into a spiritual body you just read that this this we're in first corinthians 15 you can go check it out for yourself that's what's going to go down at the last trump right and that's how christ is coming back um he's coming back glorified and all of his angels and not only of his angels he's already glorified so he's coming back with all of his angels glorified with him who is his angels i already told you that uh in the first lesson that we are right his elect that he chose i'm hopeful elect right i'm hopeful i'm not gonna say i'm for sure of the elect but I, be, I do believe that he died and rose for my sins. And I believe that he brought grace 
and I do believe that the Holy Spirit is within me, but he could take that away at any given time. Hopefully he doesn't. But this is first Corinthians three. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Check that out. So Christ is coming back with his angels, which are uh, his temple, <laughs> which is his temple, which is, is you. If you are of him and are working in him through him by the father right and that's how he's coming back but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i might have to get a part three if you're still not believing what i'm trying to say right now um and yeah all praise to the most high